Good afternoon, good evening, depending on what time we consider evening to begin. Uh, we welcome to the latest in our coronavirus initiative series of webinars uh, designed to sort of give you a sense of uh, what is changing in college admissions. Things are changing every day. The June SAT test date has now been canceled. So uh, these are indeed interesting times uh, to live in, uh, but uh, you know there, there are a lot of strategies that still apply. Uh, and in fact, uh, in some cases, uh, the, you, you can turn some of these situations to your advantage. Uh, what we're discussing today uh, is the role of summer programs, summer schools and camps. Uh, these are uh, sort of popular with, with many students we meet, uh, signing up for sort of summer programs. Uh, and of course, with uh, the, the end date uh, for this crisis still rather unclear, um, at least until there's a vaccine, right? Uh, we know that uh, there have been disruptions to many of these plans. So I want to sort of talk through uh, what you can expect. Uh, hopefully my screen is up here. That's me. Uh, back when I could actually get to the barber so that my hair was not uh, quite so shaggy. Uh, I'm the president of University Consultants of America. I've been with the organization for, for many, many years. Uh, but prior to that, uh, I was a Princeton graduate. I uh, did the interviewing for Princeton, uh, what have you. I've sort of been around the education space most of my career. Of course, once upon a time, I was a student, believe it or not, and uh, I did uh, enjoy summer programs uh, myself or had summer activities. Uh, but let's talk about, you know, first, you know, why, uh, of course, you want to be interested in what you're going to do with your summer. If you'll recall from some of our earlier presentations, which uh, I hope you've attended, and if not, uh, certainly our newsletter uh, that goes out on Fridays will make the links to past presentations available to you. Uh, schools evaluate, selective schools that use the holistic admissions method, evaluate you across three different areas. Uh, there's the academic stuff, uh, there's what we call sort of the, the personal stuff, um, but uh, there's also, schools have different names for it, but uh, as you can sort of see here from, from samples from Harvard, Vanderbilt, Dartmouth, uh, they do care about your extracurriculars. Uh, what you do when you are not being required uh, by whatever state you live in to sit in the classroom from 8 a.m. to 3 p.m. ish uh, every day uh, is of interest to schools. Uh, if you go deeply into an activity, uh, that might translate into your ability to go deeply into other things in your life. Uh, so while it is true uh, that very, very few of us uh, get to be uh, professional athletes or professional musicians, uh, the fact that you do athlete, pursue athletics, that you pursue music, uh, does uh, show something about uh, your work ethic, character, what have you, uh, your, your ability to, to commit to something. Uh, summer would obviously be a time when, for the most part, uh, you are not being required to sit in the classroom all day, right? It is a completely open expanse of time that you have to choose how to fill. Uh, so as opposed to trying to squeeze in some activities, uh, kind of after 3.30, 4 p.m., uh, while still also doing homework and, and, and all the rest, and maybe occasionally getting sleep, please. Uh, in the summer, uh, you have, uh, you know, whatever it is, eight to 10 weeks uh, to really figure out what you want to do with. And it might tell the university something about you. Uh, and in fact, uh, you know, as, as you will recall, uh, this is a, a shot of the common application, uh, kind of anything you do uh, does count as an activity. Uh, so, or could count as an activity. You will get to list 10 extracurriculars activities uh, as part of your common application. Uh, similar stuff for the few schools that don't use the common application. I just have the common application up here because it's by far the most common application you'll use. But uh, as you can see, uh, arts and music clubs, community engagement, family responsibilities. Uh, I had a student in the think last year who uh, had a lot of responsibility to care for some parents with with, the, with disabilities, uh, that would count as an activity. Uh, so any of the things that you might do during the summer, going more deeply into a hobby or something, uh, has the potential uh, to, to be something you can tell a university about. Uh, above and beyond that, there are schools that will directly ask you what you did with your summers. Uh, this question, I believe this is a my alma mater, uh, Princeton University question. I know Stanford asks a similar question. Uh, what did you do the last two summers? 
uh, between school years. Uh, you know, basically tell us how you filled your time when you had an open expanse of time. Uh, so between your sophomore and junior year and between your junior and senior year of, of high school. Uh, if a school does not ask directly as an essay, you can bet that an interviewer may well ask. It is an opportunity to learn something about what you value. So we know that one of the most popular things to do with that open expanse of time is to sign up for a summer program and you can just pick prestigious schools at will, Stanford, Oxford, Brown, uh, they are all, uh, you know, every summer now offering different programs that are, uh, welcome high school students to the campus it's sort of a great marketing opportunity for the school uh, they get you to sort of fall in love with Palo Alto or Providence I suppose somebody falls in love with Providence uh, or, or Oxford uh, where I actually uh, did a summer program many years ago um, now these things can be useful uh, in years when they occur and I know that uh, some of these uh, have already started to be uh, to either move online, uh, move into a virtual environment. Uh, I think a few might have been outright canceled. Uh, when I was uh, checking and this stuff changes so rapidly, I'm, I'm loath to sort of say what I checked at 3 p.m. this afternoon, because uh, it may well be different now. now. I believe Stanford's gone completely virtual for the summer. Brown has uh, moved their June sessions online and is uh, still determining what to do with their, their July sessions. Um, I don't think Oxford in this case was uh, canceled anything uh, yet. Uh, so, uh, you know, a summer program can be an opportunity if you have an interest to go into an interest in, in sort of great depth. Uh, I mentioned that uh, many years ago, uh, I myself did a summer program at Oxford, uh, you know, spent uh, know, four or five weeks uh, on one of the campuses there. Uh, studying some film stuff because I was a theater person. I wanted to learn about movie making. I even made like a short eight minute silent film, which thankfully is lost to history. So you cannot blackmail me, I don't believe. I think it's all been destroyed. Um, and, uh, you know, so, so it's a chance, you know, historically it's a chance to go deeply into an interest. And uh, historically it's a chance to, to sort of show a little independence. Uh, you know, you, you, you might be living on your own in a dorm. Um, but uh, while they do have advantages, I'm also here to tell you that if your program is canceled, really, it might not be the end of the world. Uh, in fact, uh, I would even argue uh, that it might be good for you. And, and why do I mean that? Well, if you were uh, at our uh, discussion of activities a couple of weeks ago, uh, you might remember that there are four different ways uh, that your activities get considered. Uh, the amount of time that you have spent in an activity matters. Uh, if you have been playing an instrument since second grade, uh, that's a lot more impressive than if you just started taking piano lessons three weeks ago. Uh, now, when you are engaged in a summer program, by definition, it's very hard to build some time into that. If you just suddenly decided that you're going to study uh, economics on a summer campus, uh, or sorry, on campus for the summer, um, it's not really a long lasting interest for the most part. I mean, unless you've you know, been trading stocks since you were 10 years old and builds upon that. Uh, so summer programs, not great in the time area. Um, achievement, uh, you know, uh, what sort of recognition do you have uh, for the work you've done? Um, again, not something that really comes out of summer programs. Uh, it is very hard to become a state champion uh, when you're sitting in the classroom for two weeks, three weeks, four weeks, however long, uh, studying something over the summer. Um, at most, you get a little certificate that, uh, you know, maybe you can put in the refrigerator somewhere that says uh, successfully uh, completed the course in whatever. Uh, so not great on the achievement front. Uh, impact. Generally speaking, pretty hard to make an impact uh, over the course of a couple of weeks of the summer. Um, how many, you know, this, uh, what impact refers to is kind of the arena in which you compete. Uh, I always use the sports example. Um, if you are uh, competing at a state or national level, uh, that's the kind of place where you're making an impact. Uh, if if uh, you're competing on a city level, maybe a little bit less of an impact, but still uh, more impressive than, let's say, sort of riding the bench if we, if we stick with athletics for the, for the metaphor here. Um, hard to make an impact, again, uh, when you are 
in a situation where for the most part you are taking knowledge from a professor. Uh, and the last one is originality. And this is probably the biggest flaw of all with the thinking that says summer programs are the way to go. Uh, you are not showing any originality if you're signing up for a prepackaged thing that some elite institution has already set up. Uh, so, you know, I mentioned just in my case, uh, you know, I wanted to pursue filmmaking. Um, I could easily uh, have, uh, not easily, but I, I certainly could, and the equipment was not quite as available back then as it is today, but I could have gotten some friends together, as I actually did in the other summers, uh, and taught myself how to make a film. Uh, that would have certainly showed uh, more, uh, you know, more originality. Um, so while I think summer programs can be great in terms of, uh, you know, allowing you to go deeply into something, if you're already interested in it, uh, if it is building upon an interest you already have, uh, you know, less great uh, if, you know, you, you're doing it because you think that uh, Brown or Stanford or uh, the University of Chicago, which that is right there, uh, is going to be, would have been impressed uh, by you sitting on campus uh, for a few weeks. Uh, it is, in fact, not the case. Um, in fact, uh, more than that, it can be counterproductive. Uh, and let me tell you a story uh, that we use as an example here. Uh, we had a student a couple of years ago who I will call Andy uh, for these purposes, not his real name, uh, whose dream school, top choice school, was the, the University of Chicago. Uh, he was an Asian student. Uh, he wanted to study in America. And uh, he, he signed up to, I believe it was economics, uh, that he was studying at University of Chicago. Uh, very famous economics programs there. Uh, but, uh, you know, I've, I've seen similar situations with students at Georgetown, Northwestern, all sorts of schools. So, uh, you know, he traveled across an ocean to go to his dream school and uh, you know, took that economics course. And uh, guess what? While he was there, the school was watching Andy. Because, you know, why wouldn't they? Remember earlier I mentioned that under the holistic process, uh, you are evaluated under three areas, your academics, your extracurriculars, and what kind of person you are. Uh, well, that what kind of person you are thing is one of those things that's incredibly hard to communicate, has to kind of come through in your essays and recommendation letters for the most part. Uh, but if you've got direct information because a student was on campus, you get to see what sort of person that was right there. And then so while Andy, you know, was sort of taking economics and being diligent about doing his work and handing in his papers uh, and, and hanging out with some of the other students, he really didn't take advantage for the most part of the programs that the University of Chicago was offering. Uh, and I mention this uh, because some of you may still be going to some of these programs uh, if uh, you know, not would, uh, they happen in August. Or you might, if you're a younger student, you might be going the following summer. Um, and if nothing else, if you're not able to attend a program that you're hoping to attend, uh, maybe you understand why uh, it's not such a not such a terrible thing. Because uh, uh, since Andy refused or didn't bother, I should say, uh, attending any of the programs, campus tours, what an easy thing to attend. Uh, you know, all students should get a tour of the campus at 6 p.m. today. Uh, and we didn't show up because I guess he figured he was seeing the campus on a daily basis. Well, schools kind of care about whether or not you're interested in them. Uh, they want to believe that you actually care about, uh, you know, care about where you might want to spend four years of your life and, and quite a bit of money. Uh, and if you're not going to show up for a tour when it's uh, literally kind of you know, walking out of your dorm and probably about 50 feet to get started on the tour, uh, it's kind of a bad sign. Uh, so he really didn't make uh, an impression, um, you know, largely speaking, but it gets worse because uh, he also did that thing that so many students think will help them, which is that he talked to his professor who had taught his economics class and asked that professor if he would write a letter of recommendation. And professors, for the most part, uh, you know, a few exceptions here and there, uh, are nice people who want to help out. And so the professor agreed. And he wrote a completely generic letter because Andy had sat in his class for three weeks. And Andy packaged it off to the university admissions office. And I don't know this 100% uh, for a fact, but I can pretty much guarantee that what happened uh, is that uh, the admissions office sees they have a letter from Professor Jones, pick up the phone, call Professor Jones, say, hey, what do you think about this student, Andy? The professor says, who? This 
doesn't really remember this, uh, this, this student three or four months later. Uh, and that's kind of all the university needs to know. Um, they're looking for students who can make an impression. Uh, and I would rather you make an impression on you know, your art teacher from 10th grade, uh, or, or rather use your art teacher from 10th grade on whom you made an impression, uh, than somebody who you think is a big name and is going to help you get in through some sort of backdoor situation. Uh, it, does not, it does not work like that. Uh, and so the student applied to the University of Chicago early and was outright rejected uh, when most students uh, were not accepted uh, at, at that point, uh, often at least get deferred. Uh, so, you know, he thought that the program was really setting him up for success, uh, but it was kind of doomed from the start, honestly. Um, now, are there ways he could have used the program better? Sure. You know, if, if you are lucky enough uh, that uh, you have a program you're already signed up for, in July or August and you know, not wood, uh, this, this virus is at least uh, under enough control that we're able to, to do things like this again. Um, you know, please, please, please uh, take an active role, uh, you know, try and get engaged. Uh, and if you have a great relationship, and I mean a great relationship with a professor, yes, go ahead and get the letter of rec. But otherwise, don't, don't think that the fact that you signed up for a program and paid some money to sit on the campus is in any way impressing the university that basically views it as a marketing opportunity. Um, so let's talk instead uh, about some of the ways you can use your summer since, as I said, you will probably be asked about that. Uh, and uh, I'm going to assume for these purposes uh, that we've at least reopened to some extent. <laughs> Uh, by then, uh, I, I'm sure that uh, you know we may not yet be in a situation where uh, you know 500 people can pack into a theater or you know restaurant tables may be further apart. But um, you know what what can you do? Um, I would encourage you uh, to build uh, upon uh, some of the activities that you're already engaged in. Um, uh, you know, as I mentioned. Uh, I could easily have, uh, you know, in my case, being interested in filmmaking, gotten some friends together to, to, to make a film. Um, no, nothing says that you have to do that kind of thing on a, on a campus. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about a topic uh, and you show some originality uh, in terms of how you go about it, uh, you know, uh, tracking somebody down to, to engage in a project. Um, and some of these things, honestly, you know, uh, if we are all still uh, stuck in or at least uh, stuck inside more than we wish uh, over the summer uh, are things that you can pursue virtually, I'm sure, as well. Uh, so, you know, kind of looking for ways uh, to, to get with your friends and do something original, uh, do something creative. Enjoy yourself a little. Hopefully we can uh, all take uh, vacations uh, at some point in the summer as well. It's totally acceptable. Universities want people who, uh, you know, know how to, to, to manage, uh, to have a balanced uh, life, I should say. Um, but I will tell you, uh, there is something else that if you are an 11th grader, uh, I really encourage you to focus on uh, over the course of the summer. Uh, these are the essay questions, or at least they were for last year, and they almost never change, uh, for the personal statement uh, that you will have to write as part of your common application. Uh, you've probably heard at some point in your life about the college essay. Uh, the dirty little secret is it's actually multiple essays because you have to write all sorts of essays for specific schools. But yes, broadly speaking, or what everybody means when they talk about the college essay, uh, you will have to write 650 words about yourself, uh, some sort of story about yourself, hopefully, uh, that will go to almost every school you apply to. There are exceptions here and there, but uh, generally speaking, every school you apply to is going to read the same 650 word essay and then ask specific questions to that school as well. Uh, you have the opportunity to do this essay over the summer. Uh, and I encourage you to do that. Uh, we find year after year after year uh, that a student who is done with his or her essay by August 1st, or at least by the time senior year picks back up, is in much better shape uh, for the application season uh, for several reasons. Uh, one. It's the thing everybody knows about, right? Everybody thinks of it as the most stressful part of, of the college application. And just having it done by the time the common application opens up for real on August 1st, uh, it, it's, a, it's, it's a mental load off, if nothing else. Uh, but you know, beyond that, uh, you're going to get back to 12th grade. Uh, I'm going to assume you're going to be in a school building. 
uh, and work's going to pick up pretty quickly. Uh, in fact, schools might be trying to make up for uh, some of the gaps that, that might be happening this spring, uh, this fall. Uh, so especially that first semester of 12th grade, you really don't get to, to let up as, as much as you might hope to academically. You know, you're going to have a ton of homework. And if you're trying to do your main personal statement essay while keeping up with all of that, uh, you're going to be uh, even more stressed. Uh, and the fact is, you are still going to have a lot of application work to do in the fall because I keep mentioning this word, uh, supplements, school-specific supplemental essays. Um, you really can't work on those, unfortunately, before, uh, before August uh, because schools change their prompts regularly. I would not be surprised at all if a lot of schools change their prompts, in fact, in response to what's going on right now. Uh, so those essays aren't really ones you can get ahead of. You have to write them through August, September, October, depending on what your deadlines are. Uh, so having your main essay done, really encourage you uh, to find some time to do it. It doesn't have to be overwhelming, uh, but a, a great use of the summer. Uh, so I hope that, uh, you know, uh, if you were signed up for a summer program, uh, I uh, well, hope that you'll be able to find some use of it, uh, certainly. Uh, if uh, your program has been outright canceled, I'm sorry to hear that, uh, but uh, I can at least encourage you to, to take advantage of the opportunity uh, to actually pursue something maybe a little more impactful and original uh, and, and, and hope you do. Uh, I hope you join us uh, next week uh, when we're actually going to be talking about how to plan for the application season. Uh, I mentioned August 1st is when the common application opens up. Uh, next week, we're going to walk you through step by step. Uh, what you need to know, what you need to be thinking about doing when. Uh, it's a whole sort of schedule to uh, keep you sane or at least saner uh, during a very stressful time. Uh, so I encourage you uh, to do that. Uh, thank you all uh, for attending. Um, if you are not signed up for our newsletter, uh, I'll leave the, the link up there for, for just a couple of seconds here uh, so that you can uh, make sure you're getting our, our newsletters uh, going forward. Uh, and uh, otherwise, uh, wish you all safety, good health, uh, keep safe, keep healthy, uh, and uh, good luck finishing up your school year and good luck with your summer. Thank you so much.